Football Manager has a mysterious hidden system known as the Dynamic Youth Rating. It gives each country a score out of 200 based on how good they are at developing wonder kids. When you think in real life, where do the best wonder kids come from? Countries such as Brazil, France and Germany will spring to mind. The Dynamic Youth Rating is Football Manager's way of trying to replicate this in the game. And so, as a result, the best countries with the highest youth ratings are countries like Brazil, France and Germany, and the countries with the lowest youth ratings are places such as San Marino and Samoa, places where you don't really associate fantastic footballers. The numbers of course can change, that's why it's called a dynamic youth rating. However, this happens very slowly over the course of your save. Today I want to try and put it to the test, and that's why I'm giving every single country in the game a youth rating of 200 out of 200. Now it is important to stress that having a youth rating of 200 out of 200 doesn't mean that country is going to produce an army of wonder kids. No, it just means they're going to have a higher chance of creating some very high quality players. To ensure that every country is on a level playing field, I've also made every country a developed state, ensured that football is very important in every single country, and made sure that the FAs have a ton of money to spend on getting facilities up to scratch. Then I'm going to simulate 100 years in the future to find out the results. There are three things that I want to test. Firstly, in my database of 42,000 players, there are 25 with a current ability of 170 out of 200. Essentially, the very best players in the world. If every country has a youth rating of 200, which increases the probability of amazing wonder kids being generated in the game, in 100 years time, we should see an awful lot more than 25 players with 170 current ability and above. The second thing I want to test is how much of an impact does having a fully loaded and played Playable league have on player generation. As you can see, I've got five leagues loaded up from around the world. Some of them are pretty good at producing Wonder Kids, and others not quite so much. I want to see that if in a hundred years time the proportion of players with a higher current ability than 170 come from these five countries. And finally, will the status quo stay the same? If every single country has the exact same youth rating and every single country has the exact same economic situation, the only difference is going to be the individual clubs. And so I suspect the best clubs in the world in real life right now, such as Man City and Real Madrid, will still be the best clubs in the world in a hundred years time. They currently have the most money, they currently have the best facilities, and they've currently got the highest reputation, and I suspect that's not going to change much. And so, as a result, these clubs will still be winning the Champions Leagues, and their respective countries are still going to winning the World Cups. I am having to do a lot more investigation into youth ratings in Football Manager, such as giving every single country 1 out of 200 for the youth rating, and completely flipping it on its head, making Brazil the worst nation in in terms of youth ratings and making a country like San Marino the very best. So if you want to see more of those videos, make sure you do subscribe to the channel and drop a like on the video letting me know you want to see it. And so we're going to kick things off 30 years in the future in 2052. At this point, the player count in the game has gone up to about 45,000. And the number of players with a current ability of 170 and above has gone up to 40. So the first hypothesis that we're going to have more better quality players in the future because of a youth rating is actually coming true. Great. However, of the five nations we loaded the leagues up for, Argentina, England, South Africa, India, and the United States, there are only four players with 170 current ability and above. Three of them come from Argentina, and one of them comes from England. As you can see, uh, Belgium, Spain, France, and scrolling down a little bit as well, uh, Portugal have the highest number of these top quality players. So that kind of suggests that maybe having these leagues loaded in the game isn't as important as I thought it was going to be. And whilst it looks like there is proof for that first prediction that there are going to be more players with a higher current ability, it looks like the second prediction that there's going to be more players from the nations that we've got leagues loaded up is not coming true. But if we look at the world rankings, South Africa have got up to 18th place. And that's pretty impressive. And that's because in reality, South Africa are currently 67th in world rankings, in between Albania and Iraq. And currently in game, Albania's ranking is 72nd, and Iraq's is 77th. So that certainly goes to show that having South Africa as a loaded playable league in the game 
is having a big benefit to the national team. Whilst they're maybe not generating players with the very best current abilities, they've certainly got a team here with really, really decent current abilities. Their best player's got 166 current ability, and at 26 years old, he could still reach his potential ability of 176. If we sort it by potential abilities, there are quite a few players in there who look very solid and young. Particularly this top guy here, this keeper, could be one of the best players in the game if he reaches his potential. But of course, that is just one example. The US has actually dropped off massively. They're now 27th in world rankings, way below where they are in real life. And India is 131st. They've done, well, nothing. So it's not really working there either. So I think there's some mixed results in that second prediction. But the third prediction, will the status quo stay the same? The answer is yes right now. Look at the winners of the Champions League. You can argue that maybe Tottenham and Newcastle and Arsenal to an extent aren't the usual winners of the Champions League. But they're still Premier League and Premier League teams are still winning it. Derby County did come runners up in 2050-51, which is a bit unusual, but we have got the English League structure loaded. And that actually, I feel, goes some way to supporting the second prediction, that having the loaded leagues is better for player generation than leagues that aren't loaded. There have only been a few World Cups so far. We'll look at the whole World Cup history 100 years in the future. So jumping another 30 years in the future to 2081, we're just under 60 years in the future, the database size has actually reduced to 40,000 players. But when I apply a filter on the database for players with at least 170 current ability, there's now 44, which is an increase by four from 30 years ago, but the database has reduced by about 5,000 players since then. So actually the percentage is way higher. So again, this is also furthering our first prediction that over time there are going to be more and more high quality players in the database because of the high youth rating. Now three of them come from Argentina and two of them come from England. Zero of them come from the United States. But India and South Africa both have one each. Here is the Indian chap. He currently plays for Chelsea and he has a current ability of 176. The South African is 32. He plays for Arsenal as a left back and he's got a current ability of 171, although his potential was 191. Maybe three or four years ago at his absolute peak, he might have been around that 180, 190 mark. And so this certainly goes to help prediction number two, where we thought there are going to be more players of the nationalities of the leagues we loaded up in the world's best players. However, as you can see, uh, Spain and France still absolutely dominate this. And whilst India and South Africa have one player each, there are a ton of players from other countries from leagues we haven't got loaded up. Jamaica, Kenya, Libya, Latvia, Palestine and Senegal. Even Uzbekistan right down at the bottom as well. So we might need a bit more evidence for this later on to work it out. As for the Champions League, well, the status quo is staying the same. Maybe not in terms of clubs because Fulham and Derby are the teams that are dominant from England right now. PSG win quite a few as well. But it is still teams from Spain, England, France, winning the Champions League. And even looking at the Copa Libertadores, it's still the top Brazilian and Argentinian teams with the odd club coming in from Uruguay, such as Penarol, picking up a title or potentially a club from Chile. For the most part, the status quo has stayed the same. Now, I did actually go through to 2138, about 116 years in the future. However, when I tried to load any save file over 100 years in the future, the game crashes. But luckily, we have a save file from 99 years in the future, which does work. And 99 years in the future, there are 40,000 players still in the database. And interestingly, only 34 players with 170 current ability and above. So this is kind of destroying point number one, isn't it? However, I think there is an explanation around this. We still have a smaller database than we did right at the start by about 2,000 players. And there are more players with 170 current ability and above than we had back then. So that still does suggest that having a high youth rating across the board is pretty beneficial. Remember though, these youth ratings are dynamic. And because the youth ratings are set to 200 out of 200, the only way they can move is down. So over the course of 100 years, most countries' youth ratings will have decreased. And thereby, the chance of the best quality regens being generated is also decreased. Argentina still have three players, as do England. Spain still absolutely dominate this, although France have dropped off. But South Africa have two players, 
and that is really important. India have zero, the United States do have one right here, as you can see. And so whilst it's not been as dramatic as I thought it was going to be, I feel like this does support prediction number two, that loaded leagues we've got in, those countries are producing more better quality regions. I mean, if we just look at the world rankings, Argentina are first, England are third, and South Africa are fourth. That's wild. That really is concrete proof, I think, of that prediction. On the flip side though, United States are 17th, they're still a little bit further off and that's roughly where they sort of sit in real life. It's kind of bounced between 10th and 20th, so we've not seen much of an effect there. India though are up to 62nd in world rankings, which is a massive improvement from what we saw in year 30, but it's still not quite amazing. But in real life, India are 106th, wedged between New Zealand and Kosovo. And in game, New Zealand are 61st, okay? and Kosovo are 88th, so they all have risen quite significantly. South Africa certainly points towards having loaded leagues from set nations is a really beneficial thing for their world rankings and player development, whereas India and the United States kind of don't show that as much. But when it comes to the status quo of the World Cup, these are the winners of the World Cup over the past 100 years. It's been dominated by Spain. Argentina get in there with a few wins, as do France, and even England pop up there with a couple of wins as well. But there's no huge change. It's not like South Africa have won a World Cup, or India, or the United States. South Africa were runners-up in the most recent World Cup, though, as you can see. Uh, Croatia in third place. Other countries, such as Switzerland, have done pretty well, runners-up twice in a row. And even New Zealand became runners-up in 2074. And so going back to our predictions right at the start, I think we can say that, yes, having a higher youth rating across the entire board has resulted in better quality players in general. I think we can say to some degree that having the leagues loaded up really does help improve those nations. We definitely saw it with South Africa, to a lesser extent India, and not very much at all with the United States. And as for the status quo, while well, making sure that everything is improved at the exact same time, did just think the status quo stayed the same. We still saw the same leagues winning the Champions League and the Copa Libertadores, and the World Cup has been won by the very same teams. In fact, the only new winners of the World Cup in the past 100 years were Austria and the Netherlands. And the Netherlands have been to quite a few finals in their lifetimes but just never won it. Oh, and Belgium too. We can't forget Belgium. But again, they're very good in real life, have been to World Cup finals. So what do you reckon we should be testing in the next one of these videos? In the meantime, I've got a video where I flip the English leagues on its head, moving National League clubs into the Premier League and Premier League clubs into the National League. That's on screen for you to watch right now.